Hey, what's up guys? John from Mongo Fishing. Today I'm here on the Monster Bass Channel to talk to you guys about swim jigs and swim jig fishing. So, let's get into it. All right guys, so like I said, my name is John from Mongo Fishing and this is the Monster Bass Channel. Guys, if you're new to the Monster Bass Channel, this channel is designed to teach you how to be a better fisherman. Whether you are a new bass angler or someone who's been doing it for a minute, I'm sure there's something you can pick up off of this channel. So if that's something that interests you, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button right down there, along with the bell notification button, so you get notified every single time Monster Bass puts out another video. My channel, Mongo Fishing, will be linked down in the description. Uh, you know, I don't do videos on the Monster Bass channel very often. Most bait breakdowns are done by some of the other guys. Uh, you know, typically when I do come on here, I'm teaching something a little different kind of thought processes or decision making stuff you know a little off the wall stuff that's not your typical stuff so if that interests you come look me up on my channel uh, i also primarily on my channel do tournament footage whether i do well or i suck i still put the video out so uh it's honest bass fishing but anyway let's get into this we're going to talk swim jigs and swim jig fishing now i'm doing this because this is a technique that I absolutely love to do. Made a little bit of money doing it. And uh, it's something that, that, it's a highly, highly effective technique that, I don't know, I just think that probably more people need to be doing it. It's really not that difficult to do, especially once you learn how. It doesn't take hardly anything to learn how. So what is a swim jig? A swim jig is basically very similar to a regular, like dragging jig that you'd normally use, right? Same sort of concept, you got a head, you got a weed guard got some sort of frilly little skirt material, you got a trailer. What makes a swim jig different than a regular dragging jig is the head shape, right? You see, that's pretty hydrodynamic. It's um, it's not meant for dragging and bumping and making all sorts of ruckus on the bottom. This is meant for swimming, cutting through grass and sticks and whatever. And uh, you know, you're, you're swimming it back. So how did the technique come about? All right, so basically swim jig fishing started on accident. It started by guys fishing regular jigs and they'd flip it out to their, you know, the tree or stump or whatever they're trying to fish. It didn't get bit and as they'd reel it back, it'd get smoked and they'd catch fish. And so that's kind of how it came about. Totally by accident, by guys swimming a jig, right? By reeling it back um, once it was out of the strike zone for whatever target they were fishing. So that's, like I said, that's how swim jig fishing started. And it's just developed from there. All right, so where do you do it? Um, swimming through grass, lily pads, water willow, you know, hydrilla, milfoil, whatever, any sort of vegetation, whether um, submerged or emerged, doesn't really matter. Next to laydowns, through sticks and brush, uh, skip it underneath docks, sea walls, you know, whatever. It is a shallow water technique. Um, and what I mean by that is you, you, it's, it's great for like burning down the shoreline, burning down the bank, or, uh, or even maybe like if you're out in the middle of the lake on like a big grass flat, but it's not a deep water technique. I think I'm on a stump. It can be done year round, but I primarily do it from spring to the beginning of fall, like late spring to the beginning of fall. Uh, you know, so all summer long, basically. All right, so how do you do it? Okay, so it's really as simple as, uh, it's as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. That's a big stump right there. Let's bring the motor up. It's really as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. I think I'm still stuck. There we go. Um, you know, you can just cast it out and reel it back. That is an option. Assuming that you have a good trailer on there, which I'll break down trailers shortly, but assuming you have a good trailer, yeah, you can, you can cast it out and reel it straight back and that'll work. However, most people do a little shake, a little shake of the rod tip, which I'm not sure if you guys can see that, so let me back up. But I am just bouncing my rod tip ever so slightly. The point of that is it gets the jig to kind of like 
kind of dart around and, and jump up and down. Now, occasionally, I will jerk it side to side. Also, instead of up and down, uh, same sort of thing. I'm getting to, to pulse and get that swim jig to get a little more motion and action. Um, it's kind of personal preference. A lot of guys just do the up and down shake. I like to do a side to side occasionally also. I think it works a little better for, for uh, weeding through some of the grass. So swim jig fishing is also all about angles. It's like taking selfies on Instagram. It is all about the angle. You don't necessarily need to just work down the bank. You might need to stop and flip through some of these little side cuts or whatever. Uh, that's, you know, gonna be depending on the grass that you're fishing. So occasionally I will stop, flip one backwards. And uh, if there's a good cut that I can work through, again, because that fish probably didn't get the angle that I was originally presenting. So hit them with a different angle and you may find yourself some fish that way. You just got to fish around, present it in different angles, find that selfie that looks the best. Oh, there's one right there. There you go, guys. A little two-pounder. But that's that. Like I said, I just switched up angles. Perfect example of what I was talking about. All right, so colors. Let me power pull down real quick and get into colors and some other stuff like that. I throw three primary colors. I normally start off with some sort of shad pattern. A white, white and chartreuse, something like that. That's typically 99% of the time, that's the color I'm starting off with. And that's because I just get a lot more bites with that. Um, again, personal preference. While I'm throwing that, I'm paying attention. I'm looking around for environmental conditions to see what's happening. Like today, right now, I'm throwing a black and blue, and that's because this morning I started off with this. And what I noticed is I didn't see any shad anywhere, but I did see bluegill. And so that's why I went to black and blue. And um, within 10 minutes of switching, actually it was within two minutes of switching to black and blue, I caught one and within 10 minutes I had caught two. And that was after 10 minutes of throwing this and not getting bit at all. So let the environment tell me what color I was gonna be throwing. So shad pattern, black and blue. And number three is a natural, a, a green pumpkin, uh, something like that, uh, which I don't have any on deck right now. I'd have to dig one out, but you guys know what green pumpkin looks like. Um, that's my third color that I typically have with me. Not necessarily tied on, but I'll definitely have them with me. All right, so trailers. All right, trailers that I use for swim jigs. Most people like to throw theirs with some sort of Kytec or swim bait or whatever. A little 3.8, four inch, something like that as a swim bait. Uh, on the back, and that's because you are imitating some sort of little fish that's coming out of the grass or, or uh, you know, wood or whatever, right? So that's why they typically use a swim bait for the trailer. Nothing wrong with that. I do throw a lot of swim baits as trailers also. Craws. Uh, this is a Rage Craw. I typically use these in really, really thick stuff like thick pads or whatever. This has a, a pretty large profile. Those little flappers are kicking, causing all sorts of commotion and ruckus. The problem with craws is if you're in really thick stuff, they may just grab on a pincher and rip the pincher off. So pros and cons, That's I get bit more in really thick stuff throwing a craw, but I lose a lot more um, craws because of that. Number three. The structure bug. That's actually what I have tied on right now on that black and blue jig that I was just throwing. It's a Strike King structure bug. Now, structure bug, I like to rig it horizontally like this 
make sure you pull the little flapper parts apart, pop that, pop that, and the two little antennas, bam, okay? So all this stuff can flap and kick around. Now, I rig these horizontally, so this has a, a, a flatter base, it sinks a little slower. It's really important if I'm in shallow water, which this, like right now, I'm sitting out here, I'm in like 12 feet right now, but up there where I was just casting, I think my power pole slipped, up there where I was just casting, I was in less than two feet. So this sinks really, really slow, nice and flat, has a really wide body, lots of kick. This is a killer, killer swim jig trailer. All right, and my number one trailer, the one I use the most. That is a Strike King Rage Menace. Uh, man, I just absolutely love everything about the Rage Menace when it comes to swim jigs. So you can rig it horizontally, like I had on that white one, or you can rig it vertically, like this, okay? So that's why I love it. Because if you want a little, uh, you know, slower sinking kind of craw profile, if you will, that's a smaller profile, rig it horizontally. If you want a smaller fish profile like you would have with that uh, that Kitek or that Rage Swimmer that I first showed you, then rig it vertically so that it's kicking this way. All you do is, you know, rig it on your, your uh, hook, pop those two little things apart right there, and you are ready to rock and roll. All right, so rod, reel, line, all that fun stuff. Okay. So if I'm kind of, you know, out in open water, if you will, or, or light vegetation, I typically use a 7.2-ish, 7.2 to 7.4, medium heavy, fast action. Uh, you know, I prefer a, uh, like a, a seven to one gear ratio. Doesn't really matter, to be honest with you, for the gear ratio. Use whatever you like. This is the Denali Covert Worm and Jig Rod. Again, 7.2, medium heavy, fast action. And then I've got this rigged with 15, to 20 pound fluoro. I don't know why, but there's a huge, uh, I don't know, disconnect, I guess, in the YouTube fishing industry about fluorocarbon. And, um, you know, you could take my word for it or you can look it up on any line company's website, but fluorocarbon has a lot better abrasion resistance than mono. Don't use mono in stuff like this. Mono stretches more, cool, but it it has a lot less uh, abrasion resistance. Now, I think the reason why some people get that confused is because fluoro can burn easy, and if you don't wet your knot when you cinch it down, yeah, you'll get some really good abrasion right there from from burning your knot. But anyway, different topic. Um, but fluoro, 15 to 20 pound fluoro when I'm fishing stuff like this. Now, the reason I'm not throwing it right now and I'm throwing this black and blue on something a little thicker is because I was in some pads earlier, some thicker pads, and so I just stayed with it. Uh, this, again, is another 7.2 Denali Covert Worm and Jig Rod again, but this is a heavy, 7.2 heavy, and I've got this uh, on another 7 to 1 gear ratio, and I've got it with braid now. Um, heavier rod. And I went with the, you know, the heavier line I'm with braid instead of fluoro. And uh, I mean, it works. So medium heavy or heavy, 7.2 to 7.4, um, fast action, regardless if it's a heavy or a medium heavy. So this hasn't been very long. Very long. It's, it's been like 12 or 15 minutes. So let's uh, power pull back up, get working back down this bank again, see if we can catch some more fish. But just in case, that's that guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the Monster Bass channel, please hit the subscribe button right down there along with the bell notification button so you get notified every single time Monster Bass comes out with another video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment below, feel free to ask questions myself or one of the other Monster Bass staff will gladly answer your questions. Um, again, my channel, Mongo Fishing, will be linked down in the description. I dig it if you came over there and checked me out. Also, as always, get on the water, be safe, and go catch a Monster Bass.